Will eBay still be known for the comp center for sports cards? In other words, will people be looking to eBay sold listings for their comps when trying to figure out when to buy or when to sell their sports cards? Let's talk about this. Hello to all my sports card collectors, investors, all of my collectibles friends. We have made it to Friday. Friends, we have made it to Friday. It's supposed to snow here in North Carolina tonight. We have fired up the hot tub. Guys, come look at this. Been probably just gonna kind of chill out and enjoy the weather. Even if it's cold and rainy, it'll still be good times. So guys, thank you very much for joining me here. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. If you like what you hear and how we do things, please hit that like button. I know it's all the, all about smashing the like button and blah, 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 and whatever, but the likes do help, so would appreciate it. Also, connect with me on Instagram at IG, at The Personal Finance Dad, and then I'm on Twitter, too, The Personal Finance Dad. All right, guys, I thought this was a good kind of open discussion. This is what I like to do on my channel quite a bit, is just throw out topics that I think are interesting because there's a lot of probably debate, you know, with a lot of these sorts of things, just things I see in the hobby. Um, and when tides shift or things change, you know, what are your thoughts? And so here's kind of what I was thinking about is eBay's new policy, this authentication policy that is rolling out here very, very soon and looks to only kind of being be propelled forward. Right now, that policy is not optional. So in other words, if you have certain cards over a specific threshold, you have to get them authenticated through CSG. In the long run, this probably works out to be a good thing. We'll have to see just as far as making sure that we're not buying fake cards, fake slabs, etc. But as we've talked about in the short run, the execution of this is going to be absolutely critical. And just from what we've seen in the sports card hobby with turnaround times with any company, and I'm not even talking about just grading companies, but any sort of company, it hasn't been great just because of the sheer demand and companies not being able to keep up with that demand. I don't know if it's so easy to just kind of be trusting in this process that it's going to work out okay. And, you know, I put a couple of videos out on this over the last couple of, of weeks, excuse me, over the last week. And a lot of the feedback I've gotten from people People is like meh and also like uh and uh with some people saying like oh this is a great idea so in other words most of the people not too crazy about kind of a mandate um, as far as this authentication piece with with uh, with eBay especially when we get into graded cards Oh man, I mean, it just can get really, really hairy quickly. And so with all of the new selling platforms and really just kind of sales being moved off of, you know, one platform, the majority of it used to be eBay. And now, frankly, there's just a lot of competition. Um, you know, ComC is a, a, a direct competitor. You've got Slab Stocks, you've got Alt, you've got Golden, um, you know, you've got My Slabs, you've got a lot of competition and probably more coming, frankly. Um, and so this sort of a thing, whereas eBay, yes, they dominate and they own that market share if they can pull this off. And so again, when we're looking at data and trying to figure out a comp on something, it is harder now more than ever uh, to figure that out. Well, not more than ever, actually. The It was harder to find a comp in 1990, okay? It was, I'm, I'm 40. So when I was uh, nine and trying to get comps on cards, it was, you know, the Beckett Magazine that came out monthly. So we could argue that it's been harder to get comps for cards, but it's certainly not getting any easier. We just have so many different pockets Pockets um, of information that are out there, and we can't see it all at the same time. Um, I know that there's companies that are working towards this that are trying to gather all and compile it and make it all happen, but it still doesn't mean that it's it's fully there yet. I don't think that we're there yet. And there's always new players, new platforms that are coming into the market. So it's it's gonna be it's gonna be kind of wild. We've introduced companies like Hobby Exchange, for example, that allows you to search you know, across many different platforms when buying. I think that that's the sort of thing that's gonna be very useful, as well as any lot, you know, where they're kind of spidering out searching the web for cards that you want as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's gonna be interesting to kind of just see how this evolves and will people be looking at eBay sold listings as kind of their go-to when they're trying to figure out the price of cards, and then to add even more, um, you know, difficult 
difficulty to this. Most people, well, I'm not going to say most people, a lot of people are moving off of base type cards, which are fairly easy to track if we're just looking at eBay transactions, and they're moving towards more rare stuff. And frankly, the sports card market has a large variety of rare stuff. If we're looking at just different parallels that are numbered, I find inserts all the time that are just like, whoa, didn't even know that insert set existed back from the 90s, back from the 2000s, whatever it is. Um, and so the point is, is that it's just getting harder. It's getting trickier. And then with sports card pricing having come down, you know, it's more of a buyer's market now than it was over the last two years. Also, over the last couple of years, we have not been able to go to card shows. Of course, that's ramped up over the last, what, six months or so, six, seven months, eight months. And it's going strong. Card shows are going very, very strong. And so, of course, then that makes it very difficult for, for comps because, how many transactions are happening at card shows that nobody has any idea about? You know, we just don't have any data on it to know what that, pr what was that price for that? Well, oh, you traded this for that? Or, I mean, it's going to be impossible to ever keep track of all of that. But, um, I think that my takeaway is more than ever is to just be as picky as possible. Um, there's so many great cards out there, but I, I am doing a lot of low offers and not like stupid offers. I'm not offering $10 on a $300 card. I'm offering 15 or 20. Welcome to your doom. I mean, I'm putting out some decent, I'm putting out some feelers. No, no, but seriously, with prices changing all the time, I think this is getting trickier and trickier for collectors, for buyers and sellers that are out there. So let me know your thoughts. I'm interested to hear kind of your thoughts on this particular subject. Are you looking at eBay as much when you're trying to figure out you know, comparisons. And it's okay. I think eBay is, is always going to be useful for this, but it's getting more and more challenging to look to one site like eBay as being the site, you know, to really do this. So anyway, I want to hear your thoughts on this subject because it's something that I've been struggling with lately. And it's, and it's kind of given me a little bit of paralysis when buying because I'm like, oh, do I, should I just wait a little bit? Should I wait on this particular card? So yeah, it, that's, that's kind of where my head was today. I wanted to share it with you all. Guys, have an amazing weekend ahead. I hope everyone has a great week. Stay healthy, stay awesome, and I will talk to you again later.